Holy salute to the Holy Club, brothers and sisters. Um, concerning the CR-19, I'm going to give you a rundown in the Bible of CHR chapter 19, 1 Chronicles. Says David's messengers sent to comfort are disgracefully treated. Disgracefully treated. The second Chronicle, chapter 19, give you a rundown. It says Jehoshaphat visits his kingdom. His instructions to the judges, to the priests, and Levites. So, that's a rundown of CR or CHR 19, 1 and 2. So, if that's helpful, praise God. Not going to read the whole chapters, but. At one point in time, there was a strand that was CR5, and, and they were saying it was SARS, but the Lord told me it was SARS-like, and it attacks the lungs. And if I remember correctly, I said, don't hold me to it, but I believe that it's uh, Corona-5. But like I said, don't hold me. If I say don't hold me to it, that means I'm not certain. That's me speaking. That's not the Holy Ghost. And whenever I say such things, um, I will either update or I will confirm or correct. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, will you please turn with me to 1 Corinthians. We're going to go to Chronicles and Corinthians. And I like to often, when I study, compare both Chronicles and Corinthians. I don't know why that's so. One deals with the flesh and one deals with the chrono chronological order of the flesh. But I believe it's chapter 4. Just a minute, I'll double check. Chapter 2, verse 4. And you see, that's the, that's the problem that I have in my ministry. I was thinking 4-2 is 2-4. And uh, many people don't know that I have or, or I had I don't claim to have it anymore God constantly heals me but dyslexia is not easy to deal with when you're a preacher or pastor teacher because if you look at all that from a distance you can't read that you see the words you can't read that's how it looks like when the devil's hindering me, even up close. That's what it looks like in my brain, trying to read. Or if something's 27, it'll spin it to 72. And it's tricky sometimes, and a lot of people, like I said, don't know that uh, I struggle with that. But God's a healer. And he's brought me a long way from the way it used to be. And he calms my, my calms my mind, and he rebukes the devil. So, First Corinthians chapter two, verse four. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those who will come across the screen. For those who might need a word, need guidance, in these perilous times we face, it is good to have fellowship one to another. I thank you for sword sharpening sword and iron sharpening iron. 
Lord, I thank you for your words of wisdom, your words of encouragement, your words of rebuke, your words of truth. Lord, I ask you to open up the book that is sealed. Let it be revealed of mysteries. Lord, I ask you to anoint your word and anoint your servant and all those who might watch. And Lord, if it be thy will, let their minds be open to some to be saved. And we'll be careful to give you all the praise and glory and the honor and to all the eternity as we preach and teach your word. Amen and amen. Paul, a model preacher. How Paul preached the gospel, which is God's wise counsel for men's salvation. See, I didn't know it said that, but I was praying in the spirit and the Bible says signs and wonders follow them and you can believe it or not it doesn't matter but it's the truth you can like me or not but I love you and I'm gonna preach the Word of God even if they shut all the churches brothers and sisters uh, many people say that the church is in 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 the heart but actually it's in the heart but it has to come out of your mouth the church has to be alive. It has to be praise. It has to be worship. It has to be prayers. It has to be uh, preachings. It has to be teachings. You can sit down in a church by, uh, on your couch and say you're the church and be idle and nothing's going to happen. Now, I didn't mean to say all this. So I'm not sure or certain what's happening at this time. But all I know is it's high time for the church to wake up and get to work because the Lord is soon to come. So Paul, the mild preacher, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, it says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. This is not an attempt of an unworthy, of unworthy um, words to be spoken with major long words with a definition that piles behind them. But this is through the Spirit of God what needs to be spoken in the time period in which it needs to be spoken. Enticing words. Uh, some people have a way with words. Jesus certainly had a way with words. And it was magnificent. Okay, but this is not what Paul was preaching and saying. It is telling us to beware of people certain people with enticing words if they use their words of wisdom and knowledge to a higher degree uh i went to ucla college or harvard or wherever they want to say and pull you in just by that doctrine of i'm smart and i'm a doctor it says to don't let people entice you or don't be in in uh, uh pulled in by enticing words Why does it say that, brothers and sisters? Because it's not about words. It's about the Spirit of God. Paul spoke it. Being used by the power and Spirit of God. Uh, we need to watch out for overpressing or pushing. Uh, we need to be aware of... Uh, God is a gentleman, uh, the fruit of the Spirit. All these things play a role or repetition. If you hear somebody constantly say the same thing to everybody they meet, they say the same thing over and over and over. Be cautious of enticing words, repetition, and pressing, hard pressing. To know that God and His Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman that brings you in with love and compassion. 
You don't just grab you and bring you in. Hey, take me, take me, take me. Go watch, watch, watch what I do and say. That's not. He, he, he's. When a true minister speaks a word, he speaks it and puts it to rest. And whoever is meant to see it will see it. And God deals with them and so on. Uh, we don't go around to every person. Every single person we meet and say, come to my church, come to my church, come to my church, come to my church, or go watch my channel, go watch my channel, go to my Facebook, go to my Facebook. Everybody, but you let the Lord lead you. And what to say. He might not tell you to tell them that you're a minister at all. Or that you have a channel at all. Or that you have a Facebook or a church at all. He might just say hand them a track and keep walking. And to be used by the power of God. God will put that thing to work. And he holds all the answers. Um, another thing you want to be cautious of is religious spirits. Um, repetition is a is a highly questionable uh, agenda of a religious spirit. Uh, lying, lying, enticing words, uh, worldliness. Because the, the, the Bible tells us in the last days, people will leave, leave the faith for seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Do you know when the devil seduces you and you make up in your mind a certain thing, it is hard pressed to be relinquished from that? That if you think wrong and you're seduced by a spirit that's not of God, if you think in that way, then it is hard pressed to be relinquished. That's why we got to be cautious in these last days of false teachers, false prophets. Uh, um, but you will know them who preach the cross and and preach the blood and and preach the tomb and preach the resurrection and preach the ascension and a pre preach res re repentance and re repentance. Uh, preach uh, that he comes again. Preach holiness and preach righteousness. All those are good fruit in ministry. And uh, you know, this is this is this is how Jim Jones got people to drink Kool Aid because he started off as one who cared. And people were not able to discern that something's off, that he don't really love God. He, he don't love his brother. He don't love his sister. There's something wrong. And before you know it, he had them moving in the middle of a jungle, leaving their families and leaving their churches and towns, leaving their jobs. And then he had them kill themselves and drink purple Kool-Aid. Well, that's exactly what the devil would do, is kill, steal, and destroy. 